Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today's video is going to be all about the best or most popular cybersecurity jobs out there. So of course this list will be subjective. Since this is a list of cybersecurity jobs I've curated, but I do think that out of the community on this channel, these jobs are the most popular or the ones I get the most frequent questions on. So with that, the first job on this list is a red teamer or an ethical hacker. So this is probably no surprise to any of you. Ethical hacking, pen testing, red teamer roles, those are typically the most well-known jobs in cybersecurity. And when you think of cybersecurity as an outsider or someone who is not technical, they are probably thinking of hackers. So there's a reason why there's so much more media presence around a job like a red teamer or a pen tester compared to someone in digital forensics or even blue team. So I've made many videos describing what red team is. So I'll definitely link those below. But at a high level, a red teamer is someone who is in the offensive security security side and it, their goal is to obviously protect the organization or whatever assets or applications that the company owns but because they're doing it from a offensive standpoint that basically means that they're going out acting like they're the hackers and using the skills and tools that nation states or other types of threat actors may have and basically trying to take advantage of an application trying to view some data trying to escalate privileges trying to exfiltrate or delete data so basically anything that a hacker would want to do a red teamer is trying to do or in other words a white hat hacker and then once they're able to find a way in or a way to exploit the application or a vulnerability they'll then take all that information create a report there is still documentation and writing in this job so so if you're someone who just wants to do the fun ethical hacking part just remember that there's also documentation and report writing that you're also responsible for and the report is probably one of the most important pieces because this is what you're going to give to the development team or or the stakeholders to be able to recreate the vulnerabilities that you found so then they're able to fix the problem and then there may be a timeline in the future for whatever level of severity those vulnerabilities are and then you'll likely be tapped on the shoulder again to then validate or verify that those vulnerabilities have actually been fixed so this is very high level and i'm sure there are other things in your job like keeping up with cybersecurity trends or hacker news and learning how to use new tools and understanding what nation states or different threat actors are doing basically what the trends are but i do think all of that is going to be important in any role in cybersecurity okay number two on this list is cybersecurity intelligence so this role is one that i've actually always really been interested in one of my previous mentors at my old organization was on the cybersecurity intelligence team or the cyber threat intelligence team and they were a huge wealth of knowledge just based on all the articles that they have to read in a ongoing basis but since I've started my new role, I also think that mostly mid-sized to larger organizations are the ones that have a department or even a team dedicated just to cybersecurity intelligence. Or maybe you're in the government sector or in a highly regulated sector and then you may have a larger team dedicated to just cyber threat intelligence. But for the most part, for smaller companies, it's expected that the cybersecurity team in general is taking the role of a cyber threat intelligence team. There typically isn't a specific person or team that's dedicated to it. It's just everyone in cybersecurity is expected to keep up with cybersecurity news or different alerts and hacks that come out throughout the week. So it's definitely something to note. If you're going for cyber intelligence, it's probably going to be more towards the government sector or a fairly large company that has the capacity to need a cybersecurity or cyber threat intelligence team. But cyber intelligence is exactly what it sounds like. Your job is basically to peruse different hacker news, cybersecurity articles, and take the important information and provide that to your organization to do something with so that they're better prepared for future attacks or future hacks or anything that's trending in the news around cybersecurity attacks. And this could really feel like a 24 seven job rather than nine to five because there's always going to be cybersecurity news over the weekend, at night, during your evenings, random hours in the day. Just this past week at work, I've seen at least I've seen at least a few alerts a day, and there's typically some action that needs to be done, whether it's whether it's just contacting the necessary stakeholders or teams or doing some research to see if your company is affected by a certain security breach or external security event, even if it has nothing to do with your company or your sector at all. Typically, people who are interested in cyber threat intelligence roles are also very interested in reading and writing and just happen to also be interested in cybersecurity. So if you're someone who enjoys reading a piece of information, dissecting it and analyzing it, breaking it down into a specific report because maybe your company sent out a weekly or monthly newsletter about different security events and your job is to condense that information into a report that is the most relevant to your company and whatever teams that you're sending it out to specifically for your sector. 
So basically a lot of reading and writing. And I definitely think it's really interesting, especially for those of you who are already reading a bunch of articles about cyber threats or hacker news. This is kind of just like having your own security blog, but you're doing it for an organization and you're getting paid a actual salary for it. In terms of tools, there might be external alerts that you may be getting from more official security and government organizations, but your company may also be using some kind of third party vendor that provides a dashboard that specifically provides you articles and more relevant hacker news for you to then read and analyze based on whatever the needs of your company are. All right, so number three on this list is another one that I know many of you guys are interested in. And by the way, nothing is in any particular order. This is just the order that I wrote them down in my notes. So yeah, number three is SOC analyst or blue team. So depending on who you talk to, blue team could be a specific team in a cybersecurity organization that focuses specifically on preventing threats, or it could have a broader meaning and include all SOC analysts and everyone who deals with any kind of defensive security. So blue team is essentially the opposite of red team, which you probably already know or can tell by the names. And then of course there's purple team, which is the red team and the blue team collaborating together. But that won't be something we're talking about in this video, but I will link one below if you guys want to learn more about purple team. So when I made my video on, on what is a SOC analyst, many of you guys were really interested in that role. So I would assume that you guys are also very interested in the blue team, which I do plan on making a video on in the future. So as the defenders of a company, you actually have, in my opinion, and I think in many people's opinions, from at least the people that I've talked to in the past few years, the blue team of a company is a significantly harder team to be on because for the red team, you just need to find one way in and it could just be the oddest path. You could be spending days, weeks, months, years hacking into a website or an organization and any way that you find to get in is valid. So basically you just need that one way in and you have, you probably have hundreds of thousands of ways to hack into some application on the internet. But when it comes to blue team, it's your job to plug up as many of the holes as possible and it's impossible to completely get rid of the risk of one of your vulnerabilities actually being exploited by an attacker or a hacker. But your goal is to prioritize the most important ones or the ones with the highest priority and then try to plug those up so you have a lower risk of getting hacked or having a security event or breach. But obviously that is very hard because there are so many things that can target you and it just takes your weakest link to be exploited to have everything come crashing down. And, and that's honestly the hardest part about being a blue teamer because there could be millions of holes for you to plug up, but a red teamer or you know an actual hacker can just find one hole that isn't plugged and weasel their way in. So that's why the blue team is such a valuable team, even though they don't get the buzz that the red team usually gets or ethical hackers usually get. But I think SOC analysts and a blue team are, are probably even more important than the red team just because just because for a red team you can honestly hire out a lot of pen testing organization or consultants but for blue team you want people who really know your product really know your network and you typically don't always want to rely on an external vendor or a third party to do that defensive side for you and of course there are still SOCs and NOCs that are hired out but I do think that even for small companies they typically still have some kind of in-house blue team or even if it's just one person so as a blue teamer, you probably have some kind of dashboard or metrics or logs that you're reviewing in some format that you review on a daily basis, or there may be some kind of inbox or queue for security events and alerts that may pop up in your dashboard. And this could be any kind of security event from phishing emails to anomalies in a log to, to someone access a suspicious website that wasn't IP blocked. So there's honestly millions of types of alerts that you can get as a blue teamer, but of course it's also your job to understand what's important and what's not important, as well as what's a false positive and a true positive. All right, the next role on this list is a malware analyst. So this is another role that I believe is definitely more popular in bigger companies or government organizations or big tech companies that really care and focus on dissecting and understanding malware. You probably won't have a small company that as a niche dedicated team specifically to malware prevention or malware analysis. But a malware analysis is basically someone who looks at a piece of malware and understand what it's doing, tries to reverse engineer it, tries to understand its origins, what it's trying to do, and basically just being able to break it down to its simplest form and then be able to describe it to other people who are not as technical in that space and help the company understand what threats are targeting it. So I definitely think as a malware analyst, 
Coding is probably one of the most important skills that you want to have, especially for reverse engineering, understanding what malware is actually doing because you are going to have to look at some kind of code. And nowadays malware is written in so many different languages. It could be more popular languages like C, Python, Java, etc. But it can also be more niche languages like Go because a lot of the attackers are realizing that anti-malware programs may not be able to detect those pieces of malware that are written in a more niche languages that may not have already been reported within that anti virus application so it doesn't really matter what language you know as long as you're able to have a pretty decent grip on coding in general and are able to understand what code is doing and multiple languages not just one specific coding language or you're able to learn it on the job which i'm sure a lot of developers out there are doing anyway i've also made a video on malware analysts on my channel before so i'll link more on the description below if you guys want to learn more about that Okay, next role on this list is a digital forensics analyst. So digital forensics was one of the first and only cybersecurity classes that I took in college, but it's also one of the more niche areas in cybersecurity. If you're on a digital forensics team, you're typically tapped on the shoulder after some event has happened and basically people are trying to find proof of what happened or didn't happen so in the past it may have been that an event happened maybe the IT team collected someone's hard drive and it's your job to analyze it and see what was stored on the hard drive see what data was deleted basically evidence gathering but but from a physical device or hard drive but nowadays typically a lot of a lot of forensics is done on the network side so you're analyzing network logs you're analyzing different pieces of data network traffic and it's a lot less tied to any kind of physical hardware so that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're going into digital forensics you may also need to have some strong suits in network security or in network architecture and and knowing the different ports and protocols that have to do with with that osi layer and surprise i've also made a video on digital forensics analyst and because this video is getting kind of long i am going to list that below and in those overview videos i've listed all the skills and certifications that are good for those roles so those will definitely give you a lot more detail into what the actual job looks like and what you need to know in terms of skills and tools so when a security event happens incident response may be called up there may be different stakeholders involved and typically during that process there is going to be some kind of digital forensics investigation of course strictly following the chain of custody that has to do with any kind of e-evidence or digital evidence and then it's your job to understand exactly what happened with whatever targeted devices stakeholders and then create an investigation report so again lots of writing i still believe that many many jobs in cybersecurity are jobs that need reporting and need you to write so keep that in mind even if you're not in a cybersecurity job that needs to have some kind of report at the end of the work that you do you're probably still documenting and making notes of everything as a ledger just for auditing purposes so that if someone external comes in and asks you hey what happened with this event what did you guys do you have something in writing in an email or in a message somewhere that says that you did your due diligence and and did something when you got that security alert all right the last role on this list is a security engineer so I do think security engineering is one of those very interesting roles because in every company that you go to, you will probably be doing something different as a security engineer. For example, it's called a engineering role, but, but there are roles out there entitled security engineer that don't require any coding at all. So it really depends what company you join and what the objectives of your day-to-day -day job look like. That can range from lots of coding to a little bit of coding to just scripting or maybe occasional ad hoc coding depending on depending on different security events or just maybe no coding at all and you're just dealing with a lot of configurations for software or specifically security applications. But one thing important to note about security engineers is definitely good background knowledge on different operating systems, specifically Linux, but obviously lots of organizations use different operating systems. So if you have a good grasp on Windows, Linux, and Unix machines, then it'll definitely be a lot easier for you as a security engineer, especially within an organization that has multiple different types of devices. So this is another one of those cybersecurity roles that do require some knowledge of coding, Again, even though you may not be coding every day or at all, it's so nice to be able to understand how an application functions and basically be able to talk to actual software engineers and maybe even provide some kind of security guidance or input on the different features specifically related to application security and hardening so that they're able to write the best, most secure code that they can. But of course, a part of that can also fall into the security analyst realm. It really depends on the company again. 
as a security analyst you may also be looking at different applications for your security organization or your company as a whole and trying to understand what applications you should bring on to your company to be able to help it be the most secure as possible and this could include looking for other security software that's out there being able to onboard it and create a poc or a proof of concept and test it to see if it works for your organization and whatever configurations or scripts that may have to go into that kind of work so i definitely think it's one of those roles that is a bunch of different things and a lot of it can also overlap with again security analysts so definitely make sure you read the job descriptions of whatever roles that you're applying for to make sure it's the role that you actually want to get hired into and i believe i've made a video on security analysts versus security engineers before so if you want more insight into that area i would definitely check out the video link below and i know that was the last one but Maybe an additional bonus one is just being a CISO or the Chief Information Security Officer. I would hope that one day that is a job that people want along with being a CEO or a CTO. For the first time, my SD card ran out of storage, so we're re-recording this. But yeah, I hope at some point a CISO is a C-suite role that people will want and hopefully bring in more diverse voices and people into cybersecurity. So let me know in the comments below what is your dream role in cybersecurity. Feel free to drop down CISO if you know, you want to get to that point in your career. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if there are any roles in cybersecurity that you would add to this list or maybe even take off from this list. These just happen to be the ones that I find to be most interesting as well as ones that I get the most comments about in my videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And don't forget to drop any video suggestions that you might have that you would want to see in the future. And I will get back to you guys on that as well. Okay, bye!